I mentioned yesterday the concordant publishing concern. I mentioned the version that I believe to be the most accurate uh, version. The Davar translation is also very good. The concordant version I am most familiar with. I invited you to read the, Dan, uh, the book of Daniel, especially chapter 7, in a properly translated version. Uh, you don't have to go on and buy it to do that. You can do that online. This is what I would like you to do. Go to concordant.com, C-O-N-C-O-R-D-A-N-T.com. On the top menu, you can click Concordant Version. From there, you can scroll down. And don't go to the first one. It says Concordant Version of the Old Testament in PDF format. That's only a sample. Keep scrolling down uh, to Concordant Version of the Old Testament in PDF format. And then following, it says 1,735 pages. That's the entire Old Testament. And you have it free online. You can find out what God said. God said the eastern animal is a lioness. You can find that out right there. Concordant literal New Testament is right above it. You can get both the New and the Old Testament the Greek and the Hebrew scriptures at concordant.org. I'm good friends with the people who run this site. This has been going on since 1909. And uh, it's been a tremendous resource uh, for me on Paul's distinctive gospel. You can go back to the homepage and get books. You can go to the catalog. You can get documents. Uh, expositions. The concordant commentary on the New Testament is one of the best. It's the best, not one of the best. It stands alone. You can get books online. Uh, the Daniel book, Concordant Studies in the Book of Daniel, which I'm dipping into now as a, as a uh, way to make further inroads into Revelation. This book's not available online, so I'm sorry about that. But the unveiling of Jesus Christ is available online you can get it for free you download it and there it is under expositions i'd like you to do that these are good people that run this company and the literature has been around for a hundred years more than a hundred years listen to some of these titles death and judgment what is the soul what is death the gehenna of fire aeonian fire the lake of fire judgment and death uh general expositions Enoch and Elijah, the prayer of faith, the two witnesses, uh, the divine names and titles, Christ and deity, the deity of God, the supreme God. Anything you want to know about, you want to find out about why eternal torment is false, you go here. You want to find out why uh, God is the father of Jesus Christ and why they're not the same being, you find it here. Here's, an article, here's a book called The Simple Story of the Universe. Wonderful. The Problem of Evil and the Judgments of God. My goodness, online books. That is the best book you will ever read of why there's evil in the world. The Problem of Evil and the Judgments of God. You can download it in PDF format right there. Studies in Philippians and Galatians. And if you want to know about prayer, here's a book called Praise and Prayer. And again, there's a concordant commentary on the New Testament worth its weight in gold. You can download it for nothing at concordant.org. And I thank my friends for making those resources available. I'm going to read it again, what I read yesterday about Islam, written by A. Enoch in 1936. This, remember, Islam is the only beast with four heads. I mean, four wings. It also has four heads, but I'm probably not going to get to that until Monday. Four wings, the most mobile, the swiftest, the most militant religion. Quote, the swiftness with which Islam spread has, I suppose, no parallel among the religions. It may be that the evangel of Christ spread more rapidly and more generally in the early days of its dissemination. But that could not be counted a religion figured by a ferocious beast. Indeed, that was the legitimate movement of God in the first century. And that's not typified by a beast. I remind you again and again that these uh, animals are beasts. They're wild beasts. And I tell you that religion is bestial. 
and it is ferocious, and it seeks to kill and destroy the Western beasts much more because they are, they are a downgrade in moral aptitude, moral behavior. I quote again, On the contrary, four-winged Islam was a militant, politically-minded religion soon after it began. A militant, politically-minded religion soon after it began. Christianity was little more than a harmless lamb before the time of Constantine. And this is what happens when religion and government mix. Religion and politics, bad thing whenever that happens. Constantine made... Uh, Christianity, the official religion of the empire. I would much rather find out what the official beer of the Super Bowl is or the official snack food of the Super Bowl. But the official religion of the empire and you're going to make it Christianity, that screwed the pooch right there. You ruined it, Constantine. You ruined it. And then the scriptures were translated into Latin, goodbye the word I own, and eternal torment creeps in. That's Jerome's fault. I hate to, I don't want to be anywhere near that guy at the great white throne. Jerome translated the Vulgate. That's the guy, right? I'm getting the right guy. I don't want to incinerate the wrong guy here. Is it Jerome? Oh, yeah. Bad news bears. Bad news bears. Quoting again from the book, because obviously I was not just quoting. It doesn't say bad news bears here. That was the she bear of uh, Hinduism. This swiftness may account for the four wings of the leopardess. Yes, it does account for the four wings of the leopardess. Islam is still mobile. 1936, he wrote this, as we know, making swifter inroads into the African jungle than the missionaries of Christ. There is no clipping of its wings, as in the case of the lioness. But in the monstrous of the last book of the Bible, that is Christianity, the wings are absent, for in that day, religions will be stabilized this is interesting. The monstrous, the, indis the nondescript, indistinct beast, number four, the westernmost beast seen by Daniel, has no wings at all. Remember, we added up the heads and the horns, the composite of the end time of uh, the unveiling 13 as a combination, heads and horns. Remember, add up the heads of the four beasts and you get the wild beast add up the horns but why aren't we adding up wings because there are no wings because that religion that great religion will be stabilized and it will be incorporated into the one great cult of the wild beast and it will not move because you can't move when you cover the entire earth where are you going to move to you're not going to now all of you know i'm not telling you anything new of the inroads that Islam has made into Europe. I'm going to read a brief excerpt. This was an article. This was way back in 2014. I say way back. This was last year, written by Gert Wilders. And the article is called Scary. Radical Islam is completely taking over Europe. See why America could be next. And this is not sensational journalism. This is not the globe. It's not the National Enquirer. This is a website called westernjournalism.com. Gert Wilders. I come to America with a mission. All is not well in the old world. There is a tremendous danger looming, and it is very difficult to be optimistic. We might be in the final stages of the Islamization of Europe. This not only is a clear and present danger to the future of Europe itself, it is a threat to America and the sheer survival of the West. The United States is the last bastion of Western civilization facing an Islamic Europe. The Europe you know is changing. I'm still with the article here. You have probably seen the landmarks, but in all these cities, sometimes a few blocks away from your tourist destination, there is another world. It is the world of the parallel society created by Muslim mass migration. All throughout Europe, a new reality is rising. Entire Muslim neighborhoods where very few indigenous people reside or are even seen. 
And if they were, they might regret it. This goes for the police as well. It's the world of headscarves where women walk around in figureless tents with baby strollers and a group of children. Their husbands, or slaveholders if you prefer, walk three steps ahead with mosques on many street corners. The shops have signs you and I cannot read. You will be hard-pressed to find any economic activity. These are Muslim ghettos controlled by religious fanatics. These are Muslim neighborhoods, and they are mushrooming in every city across Europe. These are the building blocks for territorial control of increasingly larger portions of Europe. Street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood, city by city. There are now thousands of mosques throughout Europe with larger congregations than there are in the churches. And in every European city, there are plans to build super mosques that will dwarf every church in the region. Clearly, the signal is we rule. One more paragraph here. Many European cities are already one quarter Muslim. Just take Amsterdam, Marseille, and Malmo in Sweden. In many cities, the majority of the under 18 population is Muslim. Paris is now surrounded by a ring of Muslim neighborhoods. Muhammad is the most popular name among boys in many cities. And it goes on. We all know this. It's only increased since last year. It's prophesied. I don't like the violence. I hate violence. You know that. But in another way, I'm happy to see this because it's the number one sign that we are in the final days of this eon and that the West, which I'm going to get to that Western beast, is capable of mass destruction unknown in previous eras. And I can tell you what's going to happen. You thought 9-11 was a Pearl Harbor type event. And it was. It was. But I believe what we're facing will be Pearl Harbor and 9-11 times 100. Because as we're going to see in Daniel and in the unveiling, there must be a religion with one mind. And this cannot exist with four separate religions. Let's just take Buddhism and Hinduism off the table right now because we're looking at the two caricature religions, the two near and yet so far religions, Christianity and Islam. There's a power struggle today, if I may understate the situation. Our government, as I speak, I am speaking to you from the United States, barely recognizes that there's a problem. And while we sleep, Islam is on the move. And they have violent, sinister ways of making their presence known. Not always, but when they do, we know about it, don't we? It's with fair certainty that I can predict to you that something is going to happen. Like Emperor Hirohito said in World War II, Japan, after they bombed Pearl Harbor, we have awakened a sleeping giant. The greatest Western power on the planet, the United States of America, is still a sleeping giant. It will not always be this, but it takes provocation. You would have thought that 9-11 would have been provocation enough. It was for a week or two. But this is the United States of America. We have television shows to make and movies to make. We have entertainment. We have video games. 
We have video rentals. We have other things to do. We have money to make. We have buildings to build. And so we forget. But the Islam religion does not forget. And we will be caught sleeping again. The giant will be caught sleeping. But the giant will awake. And then will come what both Daniel and John predict. A super religion headed by the Western power. <laughs>